Good morning. It's such a beautiful day. I had my devotional time out in the gazebo and decided to share my thoughts from today's reading from here. Today we're at day 20 in the Gospel of John. Uh, we're in chapter 19, or 19, we're in chapter 9, verses 17 through 41. Now, yesterday we met a man who was blind from birth and the question was raised regarding the source of his blindness, whether it was his sin or his parents' sin. And Jesus made it very clear that sin was not the source. However, God had allowed it for his works to shine and his glory to be seen. Now, after this, Jesus spit into the dirt, made some mud, placed it in the man's eyes, and then told him to go to a nearby pool to wash. And when he did so, he received his sight. The rest of this chapter deals with the aftermath of this miracle and shows how spiritually more than one person's eyes were opened, but it also reveals the spiritual blindness of others. This healing has the religious leaders up in arms. They just can't wrap their heads around what has happened. And so they continue to grill the formerly blind man with questions about who Jesus is. And when they don't like his answers, they even question if he was ever blind to begin with. And so they bring his parents in and his parents verify that, yes, this is our son. And yes, he was blind. And yes, now he sees. But they were afraid of saying anything more because the religious leaders had already put out a decree threatening to revoke the worshiping rites at the synagogue to anyone who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. So they bring the formerly blind man back in and they question him again. And finally, he says, enough is enough. This is all I know. I once was blind and now I see. He even questions why they keep asking him these, these questions over and over, asking if they want to become Jesus' disciples. In a last ditch effort, the religious leaders attempt to discredit this man's testimony. And finally, they kick him out of the synagogue. Now, Jesus was still in the area and he had heard what happened and he sought this man out. Now, we need to remember that Jesus sent the blind man with mud in his eyes to the pool to wash. The man never physically saw Jesus. He just knew what he had done for him. So Jesus approaches him and asks him if he believes in the Son of Man. The man was ready to believe and he says, just tell me who he is and I will worship him. At this moment this is the moment where the spiritual eyes of the man are now opened and jesus reveals himself to him he believes and he worships him right then and there now there were those nearby who were watching and listening this entire interaction including some of those religious leaders to which jesus reminds them that he has come that the spiritually blind may see the truth and a warning to those who see but do not believe that they are spiritually blind. Now this passage teaches us a couple of things about how we minister God's truth to others, how we evangelize. Jesus models for us that sometimes the balance between ministering to the physical and the spiritual needs needs to have special attention. In this situation, he healed the man physically first and it was during a later uh, interaction that he offered him salvation. As we look at the life and ministry of Jesus, this is one of several different ways he ministered truth. Now, as we minister and share the truth of the gospel, we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading and God's timing. Both the meeting of physical and spiritual needs are important. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 and 7, I planted the seed, Apollo watered it, but God makes the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Only God causes the growth. We also learn from the testimony of this man. He was asked again and again and again for details of his healing and details about uh, the theological points regarding Jesus. In the end, he simply said, this is all I know. I once was blind and now I see. As we share our, our faith, the gospel with others, we may not be able to answer all of their questions. We, what we do know is this, the difference putting our trust in Jesus has made in our lives. 
It may not be as dramatic as it was for this man or other testimonies we hear of people coming out of drugs or other difficult situations, but our lives are changed nonetheless. And that's the message we have to share. I invite you to consider your I once was, but now I am story. It may come from the moment you first put your faith and trust in Jesus, or it might come from a recent situation where you've seen his power at work in your life. Thank you so much for uh, watching this morning and joining with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on this passage in the comments below. Tomorrow we move to chapter 10 verses 1 through 21. Have a great day. Get outside. It's beautiful. God bless.